Hello and welcome to another video. Now apologies to anyone that doesn't like Apple, but today I decided to get hold of a Mac Mini M4 and give it a go in some common 3D applications like Blender, um, Agisoft Metashape, and see how it compares to more powerful devices in these fields. The last time I bought a Mac was quite some time ago, and I wanted to see if this small form factor machine with such low power consumption could actually be used for professional 3D applications. I'll be pushing it to the limits in this test and comparing it with devices like the M1 MacBook Air and a PC with an RTX 4080 GPU. But first, back to the worst unboxing video in the world. As I'm used to seeing lots of middle-aged men with big impressive shelves of tech behind them, I had to reach into my drawer and see what I could find. Now today I'll be reviewing the base spec model, the $599 or pound, 10 core CPU, 10 core GPU, 16 gig RAM, 256 gig storage Mac mini. The higher end models like the M4 Pro are coming in at quite a bit more. So after subjecting you to that hideous unboxing video, I'll now subject you to this hideous purple light and my Mac mini on my desk. The first good thing about this is it actually runs my 49 inch ultra widescreen 5440 by 1440 display. My last Mac, which was a trash can, wouldn't do this with the HDMI cable. It may have been the version of the OS, but the chap in the Apple store told me that he wasn't sure if this one would run it. So it does if you want to run a 49 inch screen. Then I'll download the Blender benchmarks, Blender itself, and Agisoft Metashape, and we'll get into some of the fun stuff. First off, it has to be said that this ultra wide resolution is fantastic for using Blender albeit a little strange in this perspective. Once I'd figured out how to use an Apple keyboard and use Blender, it runs incredibly well. And later on, I'll show you some high poly count geometry and some rendering to see how it performs there. First off, something sensible, checking on the hard drive space. After installing all the applications that I needed for this and OBS, I realized I had about 200 gig of storage left. With the standard OS, and the bloatware that it installs, bloatware because I don't use most of it, you probably have around about 215 gigabytes. So I think an external hard drive is going to be a must with this machine. Now, first off to Geekbench, which is the standard way most people check their M4 scores. And there's been quite a lot of hype about the M4 being as powerful as some of the high-end previous M generation CPUs. Early benchmarks here are suggesting scores around 13,000, 14,000, and even 15,000 for the standard Apple M4. For multi-core benchmarks, this is equating around what the Mac Studio M2 Max is able to achieve. Obviously, the M2 Max comes in at a far greater price, so at the minute, this proves to be pretty good value for money at the price rate that we're looking at. M3 Pro scoring slightly higher and then things like the M3 Max and the M2 Ultras seen in the Mac Studios are shooting high up the benchmark charts. What we are primarily interested in is the OpenCL and Metal benchmarks. So I'm going to filter my scores down to just GPU here and down to the M4 again it looks like we're getting a Metal score of around 58,000 and the OpenCL score around about 35 to 37,000. The max, obviously a lot higher here, and I'd be very keen to check this one out. Let's see how this compares to other M processors. So with the OpenCL benchmarks, we're seeing it around here, above the normal M3, but just below the M1 Pro. And here we're seeing M3 Pros and M2 Pros with slightly higher scores. It seems though the M3, with M1 and M3 Max and the M2 Ultra are still the highest in this area. In the metal benchmarks, we're fitting in somewhere here between the M3 and the M1 Pro. It looks like a good improvement on the M3, probably around about 20%, but slightly under things like the Pro CS GPUs that we're seeing here. And again, as we go right up to the top, we're seeing things like the M2 Ultra and the M1 Ultra being powerhouses in the metal benchmarks. So what does this all mean in real time use? So to the official Blender benchmark. And if you want to try this on your Mac, you can just download it and let it run in the background. 
Now, excuse the purple light again, but I found out that when I run OBS to screen record this, it takes a little bit away from the performance. So instead, I've set up my camera to time lapse the benchmark, and it takes a couple of minutes, and we'll look at the result in a moment. So this test was done on the GPU, because that gives you a considerably higher result than the CPU, and I got a grand total of 537, 240, 302, which according to Google gives us a score of about 1079. Now let's go and compare some GPUs here. My standard machine is a 4080 RTX, which is getting about 8,237, about eight times faster. And my other laptop in the house is a standard M1, which is giving us about 261. So it's about four times quicker than that. Let's look at the M2, standard M2, about 301. The M3 at 921. And the M4 coming in close to my benchmark here, 1,071, where mine was 1,079. But again, if we're looking at the M4 Max and the M4 Pro there, coming in at incredible speeds, five times faster than the M4, than the standard M4, and the Pro coming in about two and a half thousand. In comparison, the M2 Ultra is still about two and a half times faster than the M4, with the M2 Max still around about 50% faster there. With the M2 Max coming in around 1,396, 1,692. So at this stage, somebody please plot me a nice graph to show you. So what am I looking at in terms of equivalent RTX GPUs? Close to the RTX 3050 laptop GPU, which is sold as a gamer's GPU, around 1,135. Or the Radeon RX 7600M. And not a million miles away from something like the RTX 2060, which not so long ago was a powerhouse of a gaming GPU. And now on to another application, Agisoft Metashape, which is used for photogrammetry. If you don't know what that is, check out some of my other videos. And this could be used as a basis for Gaussian splatting and creating 3D geometry from still images. This will utilize the GPU in OpenCL on the Mac Mini, and we will compare this with the M1 Mac and the RTX 4080, as no benchmarks that I could find exist for this. For this, we will be using these images of this battered old chair in a battered old yard. We have 66 of these images, and they've come from a Lumix S5, and they're 24 megapixels in size. So this will also be a challenge for the memory and RAM uh, of the Mac Mini. To do this, we did a batch test of Align Photos in the high setting, and build model also at the high and custom 5 million face setting. All three machines, the M1 MacBook Air with 16 gigabytes of RAM and one terabyte storage, the RTX 4080 with an i7 13700 GPU, CPU, and the M4 Mac mini were ran at the same time. Well, there was probably about one second between me pressing the start button. The RTX 4080 is on the right-hand side of the screen, the M4 on the left-hand side of the widescreen, and the M1, as you can see, the laptop, is on its own. Now, the most amazing thing about this is the amount of noise of the M4. It's pretty much silent, and I've mentioned this before, and I'll mention it again. Whereas the RTX 4080 sounds like it's about to take off. I'm now going to speed up this video and we'll look at the finish times. And the M1 MacBook Air coming in at 16 minutes 7 seconds. The M4 Mac Mini, 8 minutes 3 seconds. And the RTX 4080, about 3 minutes 12. I am actually seriously impressed that I can use this little thing for photogrammetry processing and it's just a couple of minutes off my RTX 4080 for this data set. Let's look at this data again in Agisoft on the M4. First, I build the texture, which is a part I didn't do in my benchmark and I probably should have. And then I look at the resultant 5 million poly mesh. This navigates smoothly and I can use the cropping features and the removing of unwanted mesh with no glitches and no memory problems. I can also export rapidly for import into Blender so we can have a closer look at this. In Blender, my usual technique whenever I've scanned geometry is to go into edit mode and trim away loose polygons. Depending on the size of the geometry, this can be quite a task for any computer to handle. Here 
here, whilst I'm also doing an OBS screen recorder 2560 times 1440, which is using up memory, the Mac Mini tends to handle it with ease. Obviously, further testing would be needed for larger data sets or more complex scenes. Here we can see our scene statistics in the corner and monitor RAM usage and also see how many polygons our model has. This can be found in the bottom right hand corner. Next, I start to introduce some point lights and some viewport shading, which again runs seamlessly. Here, I use EV with 256 samples in the scene to render out these lights and the 4K texture from the photogrammetry output. Again, movement in the viewport is prompt and swift, and I'm not getting any of the glitches I would have been getting had I been using the M1 laptop, which I've previously used for this kind of work and demonstrations. And now back to using both the applications with my wonderful purple light again. How usable is this Mac Mini for 3D work? In fact, I'm massively impressed. The compact size of the machine and the fact that I could put this in a bag and take it somewhere and connect it to a TV or a screen anywhere with a better mouse and keyboard means that I could actually use this in place of a laptop or a more powerful desktop to process data sets and work in 3D. Whether it can be used with games engines or for gaming, stay around for some more videos that I'll show you the performance of this, running things like Unreal Engine and seeing how it compares against PCs. For the price range of £599, of course we could have a low-end PC gaming laptop that would probably be able to handle games better than this device could. But for those of you that are hardcore Mac OS fans, and judging by the price of similarly spec'd Mac laptops, I would suggest that this is a good buy. I want to not like it because of Apple's ludicrous storage and RAM pricing solutions and its general aggressive market practices regarding app stores. But the OS runs smoothly and there's a lot of things I like over Mac OS versus Windows. If we look at the power consumption of my desktop, which is probably running a 1000 watt power supply to process the RTX 4080 and the amount of heat it kicks off versus this lovely compact little Mac, I don't think we've got a bad device here whenever it comes to all manner of work. Initially, I was going to use this just to play films out of my projector and perhaps get Logic Audio and do some sequencing to see how it compares to my previous Mac. But I could actually use this for some more if I wanted to. And I'm keen to see how the Ultra models perform and where this GPU and CPU architecture goes in the future, because it has a lot going for it. I hope you enjoyed this review and do join my new Discord where I'll give you things like free models, tutorials and I can support you directly if you want to do similar things with your Mac or PC. Check out my other videos and thank you for watching again.